Eosinophils are named for the roots eosin, which is a red acidic dye, and philic, meaning loving. Eosin-loving cells are the myeloid lineage granulocytic leukocytes. As you can see in this smear, the cytoplasm is replete with pinkish purplish granules. It is important to note that these granules do not obscure the nucleus, which is one way to distinguish them from the basophilic granules that we'll see next. So what are the important functions of eosinophils? Well, first is to defend against invasive helminthic or protozoan infections by deploying major basic protein. Major basic protein is the major protein of eosinophils and is specific to eosinophils. If you get a question on your exam dealing with eosinophils, it is likely that major basic protein will be in either the stem of the question or the answer choices. Eosinophils also help to modulate allergy and asthma response. They perform the latter function by releasing histaminase and aryl sulfatase that limits the allergic reaction after mast cell degranulation. Eosinophils normally make up 1-6% to of leukocytes, but several disease states can cause eosinophilia. It may be helpful to remember the mnemonic NAACP for these diseases. This stands for neoplastic, asthma, allergic process, connective tissue disease, and parasites that are invasive. Next up, we have the basophil. Again, a myeloid lineage granulocytic leukocyte that is involved in allergic reactions and that only accounts for less than 1% of total leukocytes. These are intensely basophilic cells that stain purple with basic dyes due to dense basophilic granules. Note that these granules, unlike eosinophils, do obscure the nucleus and make its shape very difficult to make out. During certain inflammatory reactions, these cells release granules containing heparin, which prevents clotting, histamine, vasoactive amines, which cause vasodilation and increase blood flow to the tissues, and leukotrienes, which mediate inflammatory response. In this flash quiz, let's try to identify each of these cells. This smear includes a monocyte, a neutrophil, and a lymphocyte. The monocyte is the largest and has a unilobular, kidney-shaped nucleus with frosted glass cytoplasm. This is our neutrophil, and in this image, it has a four-lobed nucleus, making it a normal PMN. Finally, the lymphocyte is the smallest and has the highest nuclear to cytoplasmic ratio. We'll get to this one in just a bit. Next up is the mast cell. Mast cells mediate allergic reactions. Here we can see two mast cells in this bone marrow aspirate. When an allergen is in the body, IgE will bind this allergen in the antigen binding sites here and here. And our mast cells can bind the FC portion of the IgE by the FC receptor on the cell membrane. The IgE is attached to an antigen, and more specifically an allergen in this case, and when enough antigen is present to make the IgE cluster and cross-link the receptors, the cells degranulate, releasing histamine, heparin, and eosinophil chemotactic factors. You may recall that there are four different types of hypersensitivity reactions from the immunology chapter. Which type of hypersensitivity can we link with the mast cell? Well, this allergic reaction is a type 1 hypersensitivity reaction. Examples would include asthma, hay fever, and allergic rhinitis. And what medication can block mast cell degranulation before it happens? This medication, remember, is used for asthma and allergic rhinitis prophylaxis. This would be chromalin sodium. The dendritic cell is not explicitly represented in my hematopoiesis picture. But do you remember from what cell we said this derives? It derives from the monocyte. Dendritic cells have a characteristic star shape with several arms, or dendrites, as this means branching structure. You will see this term in other cell types with neurology. These branches simply allow structures to have more surface area for sampling or exploring their surroundings. These cells are professional antigen presenting cells, or APCs. What are the other two types of APCs? Those are the macrophages and the B cells, but neither of these can beat the antigen-presenting function of the dendritic cells. They express MHC class 2 and FC receptors on their surfaces, and when activated, they pack up and hit the road to do the lymph node circuit so that they can present their new antigen to all the immune cells they can find. Dendritic cells are the main inducers of primary humoral immunity, aka the antibody response. Dendritic cells are called Langerhan cells when located in the skin. Remember this when you hear about Langerhans cell histocytosis, which is commonly known as histocytosis X. 
Later on, we'll talk about how to recognize Langerhans histocytosis X cells, but importantly on the electron micrograph, you will see the characteristic Burbeck granules that are shaped like tennis rackets. Now let's move from the myeloid lineage of cells to the lymphoid lineage of cells. Importantly, there was a long discussion in the immunology chapter that had an in-depth review of innate versus adaptive immunity, MHC classes, lymphoid differentiation, cell surface proteins, steps in activation to lymphocytes, cytokines, and many other important topics. As you've already had a wonderful lecture on these topics, I will not repeat this material to you, but I suggest you take the time to review this material as it is important to the exam. We will start with our common lymphoid progenitor cell, and this will advance in one of two ways. It can either generate cells of the innate immune system or the adaptive immune system. The natural killer cell, aka the NK cell, is seen here, and is the only innate immune system cell to come from the lymphoid lineage. They act very much like the T cells we will discuss momentarily, but without all the need for the APCs and the MHC activations we discussed in immunology. So it is a special function of these cells to recognize infected cells that specifically do not display the MHC markers or have attached antibodies. These NK cells can cause apoptosis of those virally infected or tumor cells that do not display the MHC markers or have attached antibodies. The next two lymphocytes are impossible to differentiate by light microscopy. Both the B and the T lymphocytes are round cells with densely staining dark purple nuclei and very little pale cytoplasm, which is dramatically different from all the cells of the myeloid lineage. Of the two main types, the B and the T cells, we'll start with the B cells. A common type of Hemont question on your exams involves the set of differentiation and maturation of lymphocytes. The B lymphocytes are easy to remember in this respect because they go through both differentiation and maturation in the bone marrow, and you can think of the B in B lymphocyte as standing for bone marrow. Their main function in life is to produce antibodies. Also, like macrophages and dendritic cells, they can act as antigen-presenting cells with MHC class II receptors. Speaking of cell surface proteins, what were the two main B cell markers that the test could give you in a question stem or answer choices? That would be the CD19 and CD20 cell surface markers. B cells circulate and travel through peripheral lymphoid tissue, like lymph node follicles, white pulp of the spleen, and unencapsulated lymphoid tissue, to find antigen. When they find their antigen, they differentiate into plasma cells, basically turning into antibody producing factories. Of note, Activated B cells can also form memory cells, which are longer lasting, but less active than plasma cells, and have the same antigen specificity as the activated B cell they derived from. After they have been activated and become memory cells, the next time the same antigen is encountered, memory cells are reactivated and the immune response happens much more rapidly as a result. Let's try a flash quiz. What is the enzyme responsible for the conversion of carbon dioxide and water to carbonic acid and eventually bicarbonate inside the RBC? Well, I didn't specifically give you the name in my lecture, but carbonic anhydrase was covered in previous chapters and is an important enzyme to commit to memory for hematology, renal, respiratory, and, well, a lot of sections in step one. This is a pretty high-yield little enzyme. The majority of circulating lymphocytes are T cells. T cells are the workhorse of the adaptive immune response. T cells differentiate or are created in the bone marrow, but maturation takes place in the thymus, hence the name T cells. Remember that B cells mature in the bone marrow, while T cells mature in the thymus. Each time, the first letter will give you a hint as to where the maturation occurs. As you will recall from our discussion in immunology, immature T cells can mature into three different types of cells cytotoxic T-cells, helper T-cells, and suppressor T-cells, with the first two being the most commonly tested on your exams. Cytotoxic T-cells have T-cell receptors as well as CD8 co-receptors. Co-receptor really means that it can't do much on its own, but these CD8 co-receptors make cytotoxic T-cells what they are. These two co-receptors interact with MHC class I receptors found on nucleated cells and function mainly for viral immunity. Be sure to remember that. Immature T cells also differentiate into T helper cells, and the big thing to remember here is that the CD4 co-receptor interacts with the MHC class II receptors. And where did we find the MHC class II receptors? That would be on antigen presenting cells. It is also very important for your exam that these CD4 T helper cells are the target of attack of the HIV virus. 
That fact can be easily incorporated into many questions, and again, would be a good question to have a bunch of cluster of differentiation options as your answer choices. An easy way to remember which MHC goes with which cluster of differentiation for your T cells is this equation. Your MHC times your CD always equals 8, every time. The two examples are MHC class 2 and CD4 go together. So 2 times 4 equals 8. And the same goes for MHC class 1 and CD8. 1 times 8 equals 8. Regardless of the type, T cells usually need a co-stimulatory signal to be activated, which can be provided by CD28 on your T cell and the B7 on your APC, or the CD40L and the CD40 that we've discussed in previous chapters. For more detail, review your immunology chapter. As we stated earlier, plasma cells are descendants of activated B cells and basically function as antibody factories. As you can see, they have an off-center nucleus, which is often described as a fried egg appearance and is hard to see in this image, but other features of plasma cells include chromatin and a clock face distribution. You can imagine the numbers out here at the edge of the nucleus. The numbers that I'm referring to actually represent heterochromatin that is condensed and placed at the outer edge of the nucleus. Now let's test ourselves with a USMLE style question. A six-year-old child is brought to the pediatrician after multiple bouts of wheezing and breathlessness on the playground. A diagnosis of asthma is made, and a follow-up complete blood count identifies a higher-than-normal percentage of granulocyte-rich cells in the patient's blood. What is the major granular component found in this cell type? Heparin, histamine, major basic protein, myeloperoxidase, IgE. The answer is C, major basic protein. The question stem gives us several clues about the cellular process that's being tested in this typical two-jump question, meaning that the test first wants you to identify what topic is being tested, then know something specific about that topic. And that's exactly how we should attack this question. First, the topic. The question gives you the diagnosis of asthma, and we know that the question is asking for a particular cell type. We discussed two cells that are involved in the pathogenesis of asthma, and those were the mast cell and the eosinophil. The eosinophil even has asthma in its mnemonic of associated diseases, NAACP. The question stem also informs us that there is a higher than normal percentage of granulocyte-rich cells in the patient's blood according to a blood count differential. Well, both of the cells we spoke about have granules, but only one of those is in our mnemonic for the diff of a blood count. Never let monkeys eat bananas. And that's the E for eosinophil. Okay, so we know that the question is asking about the eosinophil. Now the specific fact that they want to know about the topic is what is the major granular component of the eosinophil? And we said that that was answer C, or major basic protein. The two-step question is very common on the USMLE step one, and being very well practiced at understanding what information the question wants you to recall can really help you narrow your choices, even if you don't know the answer right off the bat. As for our other answer choices in this question, Heparin is a component of the basophil and mast cell granules and is an anticoagulant in type 1 hypersensitivity allergic degranulation. Histamine is also released by the basophil and the mast cell and is a vasodilator used in allergic degranulation. Histamase is released by the eosinophil to limit these reactions. Myeloperoxidase is expressed in the neutrophil and is used to destroy bacteria. Lastly, IgE is made by plasma cells. Now that's a lot of knowledge about what cells make what proteins, but notice that the exam first identified one cell type, and then it's only asking for a pathognomonic protein that is made by that cell type. Well, that's going to cover it for hematology and oncology anatomy, and we'll be moving on to physiology in the next video. See you then.